it's Music Clues here, and welcome to another Aviva's Tavern. Sorry once again that uh, Laura isn't here, but she is currently out for the week, like I have said. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so tomorrow I will be launching a brand new update video, launch, uh, talking about stuff that's coming to the channel later on, um, and some project updates. So, yeah, look forward to that. But for today, hey, we got a very lengthy update. Uh, let's read the description here. We got a boatload of topics to cover this week, so pull up a stool and settle in. Joe tackles pets, our digital business, crossplay, hit registration, arena ship sizes, uh, black powder slash is time limited content, and Twitch libels. Alright, so uh, let's get to it. Ooh, this sounds like a pretty big update. <laughs> Hello everyone, Joe Neat here, executive producer on Sea of Thieves with another weekly dev update. Today I wanted to take some time to talk about a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming into insider testing fairly soon. So some of it coming in this week and some a little bit further on. But there's quite a lot of stuff that's going to be coming into insiders, so I wanted to talk about that, what's coming in, so what you can expect to see. Uh okay, so for those who don't know, inside the insider program that we had before, for those who have been out of the loop, just got relaunched launched earlier this year earlier last year. Uh, so it is now available for everybody to uh, test. Uh, you just have to have a copy of CFD's physical or digital or have Xbox Game Pass. So uh, yeah, be sure to take a look. And speaking of which, um, I will ha be having a special tutorial um, showing off some of the smaller changes of Sea of Thieves, Thieves coming very soon. I was going to get around to a bigger a uh, bigger one showing off the brand new black Act powder slash ashes, but unfortunately, me and Ethan did not have time. So uh, I'll have to wait until Laura gets back and we can both cover that together. Uh, but in the meantime, though, uh, uh, look forward to the small changes. And trust me when I say, if you haven't seen last week's video, be sure to take a look at that too. Uh, then, well, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, be sure to take a look at that because that one also was a bit pretty big update as well. But anyways, uh, the Insider program is NDA, so whatever you see inside of that, hush, hush. You're not allowed to speak a word about it. I know, I know, I know. No, it's going to be really hard, but trust me when I say it's worth it. All right, let's continue, shall we? Um, and obviously that will then be making its way through and into the, the main game itself. First of all, I wanted to talk about pets and our digital business. So as we've talked about before, uh, pets are going to be part of our digital business offering, uh, so a way for us to generate additional revenue on top of um, Sea of Thieves as we, as we continue to run it as a service. <clears throat> pets are going to be coming back to Insiders fairly soon uh, for it to begin testing again. So obviously we, we had these in prior to anniversary launching. We took some feedback on them. They weren't quite where we wanted them to be. Uh, but they're, they're getting much closer now to um, to kind of to the place that we really want them. And so we're going to be bringing those back in and, and making sure they work as intended, gathering feedback from people, um, and you know making sure obviously it works at scale with our uh, insider audience. But I wanted to take this opportunity to also talk a little bit more about kind of our wider plans alongside pets uh, as we look to be bringing this uh, kind of additional revenue um, stream into into Sea of Thieves itself. Just a bit of a reminder. So first of all, we never wanted to do anything thing which uh, provides kind of a power advantage or, or anything. So we're never going to sell any kind of power in Sea of Thieves. We're never going to introduce something that kind of separates players. Uh, we always loved people kind of um, being together in Sea of Thieves and that same approach applies to our, um, to our digital business. Uh, we always want it to be completely optional, so you don't have to buy into this if you don't want. Um, and we always want you to know what you're going to be buying, so there's never going to be any kind of uh, loot box mechanic or anything that's kind of hidden away from you. So those are kind of our principles, and so obviously pets uh, fits into that nicely. It's a fun social thing that's going to be just kind of great for the for anybody that chooses to buy one, but also really great socially for anybody in your crew because you get to play with it, you get to experience it. Um, we really like this as kind of almost the kind of pillar um, of a release of our um, digital business kind of uh, approach. But then alongside this, uh, we are going to be bringing in a couple of uh, other things too, so I wanted to talk about those. So first up, emotes. So, you know, we obviously there's a default set of emotes that everybody has that they can use to kind of express their emotions in um, Sea of Thieves. And we are going to be bringing in uh, additional sets of emotes that people um, can, can optionally purchase. So, again, 
Okay, so it looks like what Joe is trying to say is, A, is uh, that they're never going to try to separate players, and they're never going to try to separate the team teams. Uh, teams. Obviously, if that were the case, case Xbox Live Gold will be required for PCs, but that isn't the case for the time being. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very good to hear that. So, the first thing they're going to bring in is new emotes. As you guys know, we all have our difficult emo default emotes. Notes. So, it sounds like in addition to pets, which we already knew were coming, uh, uh, this will be, um, uh, uh, this will be another way to sort of generate less new for Sea of Thieves outside of outright purchasing the game, so. Again, just, just ways for people to express themselves more. Um, we really like these. We're going to, like, we, we've been having some fun with the ones we're going to be bringing in. And uh, th that will be coming in alongside pets. To begin with, though, pets will be coming into um, insiders first. But uh, emotes will be coming in kind of soon after that as, as, as we start just testing uh, all of these kind of digital business bits. So alongside pets, alongside emotes, we're also going to be... Now, of course... Of course, I would show you show you what uh, those patch notes if they were out. But obviously, because insider, insider rules rules, I can't. So, oh, even if I wanted to, I can't. And guys, it's an NDA. I, uh, me and Laura, as you probably know, are insiders. Uh, but like Laura has said before, and like I have said before, NDA. I even if I wanted to talk about it. I can't. <laughs> so, if you want to join the Insider program, program, yeah, you just had to have a copy of CPs, but just a heads up, heads up, it is NDA. Hey, so, yeah. But there is a couple other things that we'll probably be able to talk about, so. Bringing special ship cosmetics that celebrate much-loved uh, game. And by that, I mean for this update. Themes or characters similar in style to the banjo and perfect dark stuff that we've done uh, in the past. So yeah, so um, to begin with, you'll see pets coming in um, to, to insiders, but then you'll see emotes, you'll see the ship cosmetic stuff starting to come through as well uh, as we bring that all in together. And our plan is to kind of release that uh, to get audience. But for now, that stuff's going to start appearing in insiders. We'll be looking for feedback on kind of all, all the different uh, elements, and then we'll be looking to kind of package that up and, and ultimately release it to players uh, once we've gone through that insiders testing. So I also wanted to give an update on crossplay. So as we talked about previously, we wanted to give console players using a controller uh, the option to kind of potentially opt out of playing with um, kind of players who are in the, the mixed kind of crossplay pool. So we've been doing a bunch of work on this uh, in the background, so I wanted to give an update on this and give you kind of an idea of the status and some of the details of how we're implementing this. So first of all, this is coming to Arena first, because that's where we've seen the most feedback around people in a competitive setting kind of uh, wanting this option. So we've prioritised the work for Arena to begin with. Um, and update on crossplay. So as we talked about previously, we wanted to give console players using a controller uh, the option to kind of potentially opt out of playing with um, kind of players who are in the, the mixed kind of crossplay pool. Oh, okay. So... Uh, basically, as you guys know, you can play with people across Xbox and PC as a, as, this is a Microsoft owned IP, so of course, it'd be supported with both. But, there are some people out there that don't want to play with co console players, players, and just want to play with PC. Fair enough. So, yeah. So we've been doing a bunch of work on this uh, in the background, so I wanted to give an update on this and give you kind of an idea of the status and some of the details of how we're implementing this. So first of all, this is coming to Arena first, because that's where we've seen the most feedback around people in a competitive setting kind of uh, wanting this option. So we've prioritised the work for Arena to begin with. Um, and also, as we've kind of dug down into the lower level detail of how we wanted to go and implement this, we've decided that making this a preference... Um, in terms of the setting and in terms of how it works in the kind of background for the matchmaking itself is going to be the preferred route here to give the best experience to, um, to players. So if you select the setting, for, so you're on Xbox, you've got a controller and you want to play with other players on a controller, um, it'll search, it'll go through a number of different kind of searches looking for, for people to match with. Uh, and in most cases, it will find people and you'll just be moved into, into that pool. But in certain cases, whether that's... Um, like there's not enough people basically looking for this uh, kind of match at that time, um, it will 
ultimately, if it can't find those matches, rather than just failing uh, and telling you there's not, you know, the match can't be found or whatever, what we will do there is it will start looking um, kind of as a, as a lower project, it will start then looking through the mixed pool just to try and get you into match itself. So this was something that we, we, we discussed and we felt was a better solution than, you know, at certain point, times of day or in certain locations around the world um, where it just maybe isn't able to find a match for whatever reason. Uh, we, we decided to make it a preference so that you're still going to get into a game, you're still going to have a kind of fun arena experience. So in the rare case that the game can't find your preferred match and, and kind of operates on its fallback and moves you into a crossplay match, you will be notified of this. So the game will kind of let you know that we couldn't find that match and we're moving you into the, the crossplay pool. We felt this was the best experience for everybody just to ensure that, you know, regardless of your preference, you're still going to be able to get into a match uh, rather than kind of be left with a, a kind of fail state. So that's what we're going to be bringing into Insiders fairly soon telling you there's not, you know, the match can't be found or whatever. What we will do there is it will start looking um, kind of as a, as a lower project, it will start then looking through the mixed pool just to try and get you into match itself. So this was something that we, we, we discussed and we felt was a better solution than, you know, at certain point times of... A match pool? Hmm. I'm not sure how to react to that, guys, but interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Okay. Day or in certain locations around the world um, where it just maybe isn't able to find a match for whatever reason, uh, we, we decided to make it a preference so that you're still going to get into a game, you're still going to have a kind of fun arena experience. So in the rare case that the game can't find your preferred match and, and kind of operates on its fallback and moves you into a crossplay match, you will be notified of this. So the game will kind of let you know that we couldn't find that match and we're moving you into the, the crossplay pool. We felt this was the best experience for everybody just to ensure that, you know, regardless of your preference... Okay, so if you can't find a match, then you're going to be get moved into the crossplay pool. Oof. That's a bit rough, but hey. Hey, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Although I doubt you'll be like that. Oh, I doubt it'll be like that. There's plenty of BC players, players out there. And I'm pretty sure there's a whole ton that play Ada. So this is a good fit thing to hear. But yeah, that's pretty interesting to hear you're still going to be able to get into a match uh, rather than kind of be left with a, a kind of fail state. So that's what we're going to be bringing into Insiders fairly soon and making sure that uh, it works, it behaves as expected, uh, and then we'll be rolling that out to, to the wider game. So this will be coming to Arena first, and then we plan to bring it to Adventure after that. Moving on to the next one, so I wanted to talk a little bit about hit registration for the weapons. So we've had feedback around this for a little while now, especially around the kind of gun registration, and it's something we've been investigating for quite a while in terms of just projectiles and the reliability kind of over the network. Uh, we think we've made some significant improvements to this. We've been testing some just some improvements to sword stuff over the last week or so into Insight. Okay, so basically when they say hit re registration, it's when you either get hit by a gun, gun with a bullet, or whether you get hit by a sword. Sword. So this is going to be a major improvement to the game. I hope. Oh. For all we know, there's always going to be no, that one person that's going to find a way to find a glitch, glitch to break it, but... I'm begging this works. And now we're bringing in the gun improvements that we've been testing. We've seen some super promising results from this from internal testing, but we really have to test this in insiders and just see how it kind of behaves out in the wild. But we think we've made significant improvements, uh, just the reliability of kind of the hit registration for projectiles. So, you know, assuming that go all goes as um, intended in insiders, uh, then we will be seeing that roll out to the to the main game fairly soon. But really promising so far. Really kind of excited about this and the improvements that this can make to gone that all up. So yeah, really keen to get this out to insiders this week and, and just kind of get that feedback and validate uh, the tests that we've been running internally. So yeah, some really promising stuff there. Over the last kind of few weeks, we've been running some tests in Insiders with different ship sizes uh, in Arena. So obviously we launched with Galleon for Arena, and we've actually been testing some, some different stuff in Insiders. And the first thing we tested uh, for a little while was actually bringing in the kind of the brig uh, and the sloop into the same session with Galleon. So you're all in the same world, all competing, and kind of just giving it uh, kind of player choice as to which ship size you want and, and seeing how that kind of went up against each other. Uh, we, we tested it for quite a while. We've seen 
seen some pros, we've seen some cons around the experience, and we've kind of come to the decision that that's not the right way for us to bring in sloops and brigs uh, into the arena itself. So we've kind of parked that for now, but super valuable feedback that we got from all of our insiders. And we're now looking at kind of continuing some tests just to decide on the best way to bring sloops and brigs into the arena itself. So yeah, more testing going on uh, in insiders at the moment, but we've decided that that kind of bringing them together into one mode, into one thing, isn't the way we want to uh, introduce these into the arena. So moving on, I wanted to talk a little bit about black powder stashes. So really good to see how this has landed uh, in, in the wild, and, and ultimately actually just all of the kind of fix. Okay, so I guess I missed that, but hmm. It looks like they are trying to bring in some sloops and brigantines into uh, the arena mode, which would be a big help for me in Lola, but hey, you'll find a way where you'll find a way. Wait, I have faith in you. Just be careful, okay? There's an accessibility improvements and stuff that came as black powder stashes. It was a big list of stuff in, in the build notes and, and really cool to see all of that got released. So I so had a couple of questions around the black powder stashes and clarification around what's time limited and, and kind of what isn't and just some feedback and, and questions around that all up. So we're having some discussions uh, internally, haven't quite managed to have them all before recording this video. So uh, we'll hit that next week in next week's dev update, but we're just kind of taking in all the feedback and questions from everybody. But yeah, we're, hit, we're here, we're listening, some really good feedback back on it uh, so I'll, I'll clarify everything and our approach to that kind of moving forward in, in next week's dev update. Finally just a reminder for everybody that our Twitch Rivals event is going live uh, later today. Really excited to see how this goes down. There's some great people have been invited. There's going to be some real kind of competitive uh, sessions later now today. I believe and I'm, I'm really looking forward to just seeing how this goes. Okay later today guys um, I guess I better get this video out ASAP. Uh, but uh, yeah um, I'm gonna uh, tune in directly to CFE's Twitch, Twitch, and uh, I, why I won't be able to watch it live. Live, I will set it up up to host, so you guys can watch over on our channel. And uh, obviously, Lee, you could watch my mine on uh, the Music Clues channel. You know, uh, DJ Music Clues at Twitch, or you could watch it on the Go Game Gamers Twitch. Uh, it's the Go Gamers at Twitch. Yeah, simple down both today and, and tomorrow so yeah make sure you tune in and if you haven't already make sure that you go to kind of see and look to how to link your account so that if you're watching uh, both uh, today and tomorrow you get a chance to earn the obsidian sets that are kind of up for grabs as, as part of watching to well well i won't well if that's the case then i will be able to watch today I uh, won't be able to watch today, but I will tune in tomorrow. But you heard him. You head to cfees.com to find out how to link your account. Come to think of it, I think I'll do a tutorial on that right now. Now, as soon as we're done with this video, video, uh, I'll cut it here, uh, here, here, real quick, and then uh, I will post a set, and then I will essentially post a separate video, video with a tutorial of how to link your account to CFE, to uh, for uh, CFEs. He's for Twitch, so yeah. But you gotta give me a second, second. So let's finish this update. So a lot of stuff in in today's update today, as as always. Like look forward to questions and feedback, and I'll make sure that I tackle it in uh, next week's video. But aside from that, I'll see you on the seats. Cheers. All right, and that's today's update. Okay, so I'll make a separate video video for you guys to take a look at. Um, and yeah. That's all for now. Uh, thank you for tuning in to today's Aphibus Tavern. Um, as always, if you have any more questions for me and Lola, be sure to let us know. You can find, find us on Twitter, in Discord, or, on, uh, or, uh, uh, or here on YouTube. And obviously, if you like this video and want to subscribe to the Go Gamers, we have a whole bunch of stuff. Just recently, I have posted some Marvel Avengers stuff, have more coming, and some Splatoon stuff, have more coming as well. Um, and, yeah, and, uh, this week, uh, I'm going to be having some stuff for Fire Emblem Free Houses, Houses, which is coming out, out in a matter of three days, so, um, yeah, uh, alright, alright, as Joe would say, I'll see you on the seas, cheers!